everyone. I'm Sangi Walsh. I lead the platform product marketing team at Ring Central. That's the way that we work with developers in awareness around our APIs and SDKs and ecosystem, as well as integration partner marketing. So working with major cloud companies who build into our platform or we build into theirs. Yeah, and hi, I'm uh, Amir Hamid. So I'm the vice president of Global Solutions Engineering. I reside in Toronto, Canada. So even colder than Chicago, but uh, you know we we love our four seasons here. Uh, at any rate, um, pleasure to be here. I lead the pre-sales team, so that includes the solutions engineers, the architects, the custom engineers, the customer experience contact center solutions engineers that work with our end customers and really help them as they embark on their digital transformation journeys. All right, so with that, uh, I believe we're going to be talking about working from anywhere and how that's been enabled. So, I mean, what a year it's been. It's, it's unbelievable. Almost, I mean, a year ago, I was actually on a, on a trip in Asia, a business trip. Little did I know, <laughs> coming back uh, in the new year, uh, you know, what was to come. And so it's been a tremendous, tremendous year in terms of learnings, in terms of a change in which, you know, we've really adapted to... Uh, how we can collaborate and how we can work together, right? So communications is absolutely mission critical now more than ever because we no longer have that opportunity in many cases for the face-to-face. -face. But at the same time, you know, there are certain capabilities, certain functionality that cannot be compromised. You know, you must have secure communications and collaborations. It's got to be reliable. It's got to be trusted. So things like, you know, um, mission critical, we talk about five nines, you know, we, we offer an SLA of five nines, absolutely critical to ensure that while everybody's working from home or working from wherever they may be, that they indeed are able to communicate effectively and we can continue uh, working uh, you know, as one, even though we may be in so many different parts uh, uh, of the world. Um, next slide, please. So again, we're talking really about work from anywhere together, right? So I think the emphasis here is really on collaboration, right? So how do you keep the workforce productive, right? And the workforce, I mean, obviously, I know in the audience, we've got people from the public sector, from uh, businesses of various sizes, you know, we've got education sector, and, you know, irrespective of the various personas that we have, the key obligation is how do we keep, keep keep people connected. Uh, you know, we've been focused on that connectivity. You know, when we talk about prior to COVID, we were already enabling with our cloud first and mobile first solutions, the ability to work from everywhere. Certainly I'm a great case study, right? So I leading a global team, you know, 80% of the time I was actually on the road. It's kind of nice now, you know, I'm daddy's home for, for dinner all, every day. Not sure how much uh, the kids uh, are getting tired of me yet, but at any rate, certainly working from anywhere was the norm, right? Planes, trains, automobiles, irrespective of where I am, you know, they, you know, back in the day, people used to change their out of office. Well, I'm always out of the office and my office is actually my home when, when I was rarely there. That's certainly changed now, but the productivity is, is, has not changed, right? So we're doing this webinar today. I've been engaged in so many customer calls, uh, channel meetings. You know, when I was actually traveling, believe it or not, um, I wasn't as productive because I wasn't able to do as much in a given day, given the amount of travel time. But now, given that we are all pretty much working from home, working from anywhere, again, how do we ensure that we're able to go from one meeting to the other to the next and co communicate you know, and collaborate, right? So when I talk about that, it's something that we refer to as you know, MVP. So we've got message, video and phone and effectively enabling that communications across the board uh, irrespective of where we are. Uh, next slide. So, you know, we're talking about um, moving to the cloud and, you know, we've been in the industry for a while. We've been enabling collaboration and communication. And what we saw is there's been very, very uh, lots of point solutions that have come out, you know, voice only solutions, perhaps messaging only solutions, or even video only solutions. But what we are trying to do is to enable a seamless single app 
communication platform, which gives you the full suite of communication. So whether you're messaging, whether you're uh, calling on the phone, whether you're doing a video collaboration, and the importance there is you don't lose any of the context. So, you know, who I'm talking to, whether it be one-to-one -one or one-to-many, we can actually have groups uh, enabled. We can have video conferences that have been set up. And then even after the video conferences, you've got all of that context because you can continue the dialogue, continue the conversation in a messaging, and it's all unified in one app. And then that's also surrounded by the analytics that go around with it. So you've got all of that continuity of communications uh, without sacrificing any reliability or the five nines or the security, but again, maximizing productivity for the various businesses, for the various persona, so that everybody has access to the capabilities that they need as they're working from anywhere uh, to collaborate and communicate and taking the onus away from the end user to say, hey, uh, you know what, um, did you get my text? Well, wait a second, did you text me? I, you know, we're talking on the phone. Oh, it's not all in one. So that's the, that's the benefit of really putting that away from the silos and really unifying the app and maximizing productivity during the crisis and of course beyond the crisis as well. Uh, next slide. I mean, I think, I think everybody would have to admit the way we've changed, you know, it, it's, it's, it's truly forever. I mean, you know, today we're all, many of us are working from home, but we don't know what the new norm is going to be, right? Is it going to be, uh, you know, some companies have said, hey, I'm going to have a permanent work from home scenario. You are no longer required to come into the campus. Some of them are saying, well, depending on the job, you'll have to come in. And in many, it's more of a more of a hybrid scenario where they're expecting some to come back into the office and some not to come back. And, and you can see the stats. I mean, you know, 75 million people uh, in over 150 countries are working at home during COVID-19. And I would say these are conservative estimates, to be honest. I mean, in the Bay Area alone, you know, 6.7 million people are staying home. And, and in the Bay Area, parts of the U.S., certainly in Canada, we're going through yet another lockdown scenario as we wait for the vaccines to come in. So certainly the, the, the way we've worked has changed you know, certain things that uh, perhaps weren't acceptable earlier are certainly acceptable now. Personally, I think it's endearing and cute when, when young children come in and, you know, and interrupt meetings or you hear the dog barking. So I think the tolerance has changed for how we communicate and collaborate because everybody's in the same boat, but at the same time, you're, you're just as productive, you know, as you need to be. Uh, next slide. So again, I talked earlier about digital transformation, and certainly that's what we're about. You know, we're 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 seeing customers embracing the cloud, moving to the cloud, and and you know, this is a pre-COVID scenario where you know we there were some various surveys taken. You know, companies need to respond, adapt. Only thirty percent thought that they were prepared. So you can imagine how that's impacted us and me personally as well, because you know, in many cases, we've been talking to customers, clients, universities, public sector, businesses, and they may have taken an approach where, okay, we'll move a certain campus to the cloud or we'll move a certain location, perhaps headquarters. And then as part of IT, they've got other priorities. So it's like, you know, we'll, we'll get on with the rest of it over time. But the reality is that's completely changed now. It's, you know, all of those things have completely accelerated and we're seeing, you know, digital transformation shifting to the cloud as an immediate priority. And that's kept us and I'm sure everybody extremely busy during these times. Uh, next slide. So now we wanted to take a poll. So I talked about, you know, we've got the norm now where everyone's locked up. You know, we've had the previous to COVID where most people were certainly going into the office unless you were a road warrior. But let's do a poll now. I'm very curious to get some audience participation. You know, what percent of employees do you expect to have back in the office in 2021? So I see people are responding now. We'll let that run for another 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Five, four, three, two, 
one. Thank you very much, everybody. All right, so what do we see? We see, uh, you know, 9% um, or so are saying, um, percent of employees, 100%, so only less than 10% are saying everybody will be back in the office. You know, between 50 to 99% of the people, 42%, and one to 49%, 48%. So, so again, I think this kind of uh, builds into that new norm, that new hybrid, right? Where, where absolutely people will come back into the office but perhaps not in the same manner. And, and, and so again, uh, if you go to the next slide, uh, uh, Jason. So employees need to communicate anywhere, in any mode, and on any device. And this has given rise to an interesting challenge, right? So, you know, we know that we can do effective meetings in the office. You know, we've got conference rooms and we've got things uh, in place. And, and we're also, as we're doing today, we can do webinars and we can do conferences, uh, you know, web conferences, video, high definition. We can do all of that when we're all not in the home. But I think an interesting challenge is going to be when we get back to this new norm where certainly the, the various customers I'm speaking with are talking like that, where, um, you know, you're, you're seeing that what's going to be the new norm? What, how are you going to effectively collaborate when some of the people are in the office and some of them are not? And how do you maintain an effective and productive collaboration method when some are in the room and some are not? And, and, and I think that's going to be extremely interesting and, and why it's ever critical that everybody has access to the tools that they need. So if I'm in the office, I'm in a room, sure, I've got the high definition video conference and, I, and away I go, but if, I'm, but if I'm not, I also have the ability. It's almost like a democratization of video conferencing because it doesn't matter where I am, it doesn't matter which device I'm in or on, you know, my tablet, my desktop, my, my iPhone, my Android, or I may be in a, in a conference room itself, but certainly on any device, I can effectively communicate, effectively collaborate, and effectively ensure that business is still uh, running, moving forward. Uh, next slide. So again, I think you'll see, you know, work from anywhere is, is a now necessity. This is not something that, uh, you know, anymore we can think that, you know, is this going to be real? You know, is it going to be all working from home? No, it's not. It's going to be working from anywhere. Again, at Ring Central and other cloud vendors in this space, certainly we've had a mobile first approach where we took everything into the cloud, but mobility was always there. So we've got various tools in place and each of those tools work effectively across multi modes of communication. So we've kind of already been planning for this type of scenario and certainly with COVID, it's just expedited that rollout and showed the importance where it's absolutely critical that working from home is now an absolute necessity. And next slide. So, you, you know, you see some of the challenges in the whole organization, you know, it's not without challenge. So certainly there's going to be some considerations that have to be taken into place, right? So from a productivity and flexibility perspective, you've got the employee. I can tell you, you know, we've just working from home these days, it's been pretty difficult, you know? So I've, I've got a global team. I'm in Toronto. I've got different time zones. My day starts really early. I've got the UK team or others, and then it can end really late, uh, you know, in the West Coast. So I think there is some, some issues there that have to be drawn up where, you know, the productivity can shoot the roof, but there also has to be a, a human element to it, right? Um, from a business's perspective, you know, employee engagement, the customer experience, absolutely important as well, right? We like to tie in and blend together the employee experience with the customer experience because ultimately, you know, not everybody is a call center agent, but certainly anybody within an organization can have the ability, they can be a subject matter expert that can be brought in with these same cloud-based tools to answer a question, to delight a customer, or provide some service or support. And of course, the technical aspects. That's where my team and others come in, you know, ensuring that as 
our customers move to the cloud, we help them manage it. We've got training in place. We've got support in place. We've done it uh, globally. We bring those best practices to bear so that when the, the, the customers end up moving towards the cloud, they know what to expect and certainly they can hit the ground uh, running. You know, and this is something that was very difficult in the legacy world, right? This is, this is my reality. I mean, when you look at it globally, there's like 400 million lines of, of prem-based solutions. These were voice only. They were one location. These were big closed systems that were in place. These were not prepared for COVID. These platforms were not prepared for the digital transformation. These systems were just very, very basic functionality and not very nimble, unlike the cloud world, not very scalable as well. All of the benefits that you see in the industry and in cloud, we've really brought it to bear in the communications uh, uh, arena. So again, talking about a reimagined experience, right? How do you free yourselves from the, from the shackles, if you will, of your prem-based PBX, that old school platform that quite frankly did you well up until that time, but was really not prepared for this work from anywhere environment where you, know, you need mobility, you need enhancement, you need high definition video, you need it all irrespective of where you are. This is that reimagined experience, which quite frankly, we are going through as we speak right now. Uh, next slide. So again, some of the, I talked about it, any device, any mode, you know, we've got to make it uh, any place. It's got to be easy to buy, easy to use, easy to manage. And again, I know some folks are talking about the security cannot be compromised. The five nines SLA is critical. It's got to be global. It's got to be open, you know, and Sangita is going to expand on some of the openness of our platform where when we go into an, an education vertical or if we go into retail or financial services, we have the ability to extend out our platform through API and integrate into the various systems of record that you may have. Uh, next slide. And so this is really my last slide. You know, let's, it's, just, it's just leaving this with you, you know, a what if scenario, right? So what if your communication tools were productive from anywhere? One solution across the board that's easy to use and reliable, right? Your employees are empowered with reliable real-time collaboration, right? And when I say real-time, it can be message, it can be video, it can be phone, all of it, irrespective of where they are, they are connected. And then, and then of course, the IT perspective. We can't uh, mitigate the, the importance of having tools that are in place with the analytics so that IT, when they actually deploy these solutions, they have access and they have the controls that they had uh, from before. So, you know, what would be the impact of the freedom if you were able to work from anywhere? And with that, I'd like to uh, hand it over to Sangeeta. Hi everyone. So th that's great. A lot of information you just stated really resonates with me personally. Um, you know, I'm a, a mom that's really adjusting to balancing my kids and my young kids who are in school, balancing um, working now from home in the guest room, uh, not traveling. It's the work from anywhere has affected me to um, an effect that I never thought I would have to try to slot out time to just, you know, go to the store or do things that I took for granted. So, you know, I personally feel very attached to that whole mantra as well as, um, you know, why having an open platform matters because it talks about saving time, which is what I'm going to talk about here shortly. So thank you again. Again, I'm Sankey DeWalsh. I lead the uh, platform product marketing team for Ring Central. I'm based out of Belmont, California. And I'm here to talk to you about why you should maximize your cloud investment. You've now decided to move to the cloud. You are looking to work from anywhere. So why does an open platform matter? Next slide. A lot of customers live in their applications. I'm sure more than ever, everyone um, doesn't want to waste their time. Time is essentially a very valuable asset to them. And people are wasting right now, over 60% are wasting up to 60 minutes a day just switching between applications. I'm sure many of you face it where you've got multiple screens up and you're looking here for email and you're looking here to send a message and you're looking here um, to maybe look at your CRM. It's a lot of time and it takes a lot of uh, mental organization. 
Over 50% of people feel that their time will be saved by having integrated business applications. They want to see that level of complexity brought into one application. And, you know, as I just mentioned, over 60% waste time, over 60% want a single communication platform. They don't want to continue to look and have these um, siloed applications. So as you go to the next slide, I'm sure many of you on this call are very familiar with these applications. I know for a fact, I live and breathe in um, some of these applications professionally and even personally. And companies that are in the cloud obviously see many of these companies as cloud leaders and there needs to be that table stake for individuals to be able to utilize these products very quickly, very easily and all um, within cloud access. So if you go to the next slide, when you are looking to work with a unified communications vendor, you want to make sure that you're picking a vendor that will allow you to have this flexibility. You saw those applications I mentioned earlier. You want to be able to pick a vendor that allows you to go into a no code mode so you can choose applications over hundreds of them from an app gallery. Right now, what you're seeing here is um, the Ring Central number where you have the ability to choose over 200. But in general, you want to be able to go and access a marketplace, a gallery to choose ready to use integrations with those applications I just mentioned. Or maybe you want to go a low code route. So perhaps, you know, you have an application that you've chosen from the app gallery, but you actually have a custom CRM and you want to bring in a soft phone with full feature set that you know you need, like click to dial or the ability to see a number who calls you before you answer. You can do that with widgets. Imagine, um, for instance, you're on Facebook and you're scrolling through and you see a video. You're usually watching a YouTube widget within Facebook. So you want to find a company, a communications company, that can allow that type of integration. So if your application isn't on an app gallery, you aren't that savvy and you want to custom build everything, you want to go widget route. So you want to make sure that there is that option for those who are a little bit in between. And then pro code. Procode is you're an award-winning designer, you're an award-winning developer, you're able to build how you want using your APIs and SDKs. Between these three different types of favorite ways to work, this allows your cloud business to be able to be open, allows your cloud business to be able to save time, and allows your uh, end user customers have easy ways to, to work, and it allows you to be able to support these folks through different ways. Next slide. So I want to give you some example of customer success. We've talked a lot about employee success. We've talked a lot about the new norm, but um, think about, you know, with everything going on right now, saving those times with all these integrated applications. We have a company at Ring Central that we work closely with, Goosehead Insurance. They've saved hours a day um, being able to have automated workflows between CRM, between uh, Microsoft, because they're using that for email, and then Google, because they're using it for Chrome browser. Either way, the end user is definitely benefiting because what they know is that what they need to do to get their business done is being managed, is being handled by their UCAS provider. Another great example on the next slide, a case study I saw with a company called 24 Hour Tees. It was really interesting when I learned more about 24 Hour Tees. They're a very small retail company. And I know that when they moved to the cloud, that was a big investment for them to, to get everything nimble and move to the cloud, to have the ability for their staff to work from anywhere. Um, one thing that was interesting is that they wanted to be conservative about their budget, especially now with um, the environment we're in, everyone wants to be conservative with their budget and time. So what they did is they were able to leverage an API to provide automation. So to provide response back to folks who have perhaps ordered a t-shirt or placed some sort of order that needs to go out um, to immediately use the communication tool that they had in place to respond to their customers. So they didn't need to hire four employees just because they had a way to automate everything. And all again, through an open platform. Next slide. So with the open platform, I do wanna summarize some main points. You know, As I'm part of the story that Amir here is talking about today, an open platform just continues to add value. You wanna be able to um, make that investment in the cloud, but make a strong investment where your customers have the option of extending communications with their business. So they have the ability to have access to an app gallery or a marketplace. 
You also want to make ease of use for these uh, customers and end users. You want your integrations to be easy. You want to make sure that your cloud provider is giving you not only this access and extension, but supporting the different applications you use, like a CRM, a customer support app, a productivity app. So whatever your business need is, there is that ability to support. And then lastly, with an open platform and that move to the cloud, you now have access to custom workflows. You might be a small t-shirt company that needs to um, send out notifications for every order and you don't have the ability to hire somebody uh, quickly to do all of this. You're able to do it with our widget. You're able to send out notifications um, based on different workflows that are required for your business. Whatever the case is, that open platform allows you to do more with these APIs. And that's all that I have to say. I'm very passionate about this area and um, I'm really grateful to speak to all of you about this and I'd love to hear what else Amir might have to say to add. Great, thank you, Sangeeta. So absolutely, I think the, the integrations are key to a successful implementation, right? It's not a matter of you know, shifting to a, to a platform and all of a sudden it's closed, right? I, I can no longer leverage the various tools that I need. So I think what you covered is extremely relevant. And, and just as relevant, you know, I just wanted to touch a little bit about, you know, the new norm that we are at and some of the best practices that, you know, we, we see uh, customers de deploying around the world, really, um, you know, to keep people engaged and, and, and effective, right? So the first thing is the culture of accountability, right? I mean, what are the expectations? You're working from home, but it shouldn't mean that you're working from home means, you know, people can call you or, or video conference you at any time, right? It's not a matter of being always available, although the tools do allow you, but you can set preference, right? So just like you've got the presence, you know, I'm, I'm available, I'm in a meeting or I'm busy, you can also schedule some downtime where you're not, but the accountability is key, right? So what are those uh, items that need to be done and by when, right? Trying to keep things predictable as much as possible. Now, of course, we're in an unpredictable uh, world, but as much as possible, kind of having that level of predictability, having, you know, team meetings set at certain times, you know, checking in on people, I think is extremely important. I think, you know, uh, one thing we didn't discuss, but it's certainly important is, you know, the mental health of, of our um, of our colleagues, uh, of our partners, of our vendors, of, of everybody. I mean, I think it's extremely important. Like I said, in my scenario, you know, I happen to be home. It's kind of nice being home after a decade of being on the field, uh, you know, constantly. But some of my team are, are alone, you know, and they may be in a loft in a downtown environment. And it's very difficult. You're locked down. You don't have all the people that you typically talk with. Maybe they're in a different city. Their family, friends are not there. And they actually looked forward to that water cooler talk because that was, that was their outlet to kind of socialize. So extremely important to stay connected, extremely important to be part of a team. Um, but at the same time, you know, focus on the task at hand, but still have fun. And, and, you know, this is something that certainly we're all doing. It's communicate more and not less. I do so many more skip level meetings and meetings with individuals just to check in and say, hey, how's it going? How, how are you? You know, and it doesn't necessarily have to be about work, just a matter of how are you doing? You know, how can I help? You know, anything that you need uh, goes a long way. Uh, next slide. So again, this is just a little bit of a, uh, you know, kind of a summary of, of the employee experience, certainly. Back then, you know, we talked a little bit about the, the, the premise-based or the legacy PBXs that were on-prem, you know, with the IT team certainly supporting them. They were usually voice-only, office-based, siloed systems, you know, fragmented reporting. And it was really a matter of you had the haves and the have-nots. You know, if your office happened to be headquartered in Silicon Valley, then maybe you got the latest and greatest release of the PBX. But what if you were in another part of, of, of the US in a remote location? Perhaps you were a sales uh, uh, person in, in the company or somebody who's service and in the field. Now, the reality is the functionality that you need is based on your persona, not based on where you are. So if somebody's in sales or somebody's in service or somebody's a call center agent, it really doesn't matter where you are. You need ubiquitous access to the same capabilities and functionalities based on your persona and based on your job. And that's really an advantage of a cloud-based system that we're able to provide today, right? So message, voice, phone, 
any device, anywhere. Uh, the open platform APIs, as Sangeeta talked uh, and gave us some, some insight on, you know, int intelligent analytics. Who called? How long did they call for? What was the duration of the call? Was the call abandoned? Why was it abandoned? Giving the uh, the you know giving you the insight through analytics to determine are you as productive as you need to be and are you also delighting customers like you you need to and of course global scale right I mean that today is is very very uh, relevant we're in an M and A world companies are changing you've got people linking up with various people so you need the ability to effectively communicate collaborate across the world just as if you were talking to your uh, neighbor. Uh, next slide, and this is just a, this is really the last slide that I'll share before we shift to Q and A. This is just a little bit of a uh, of a, of a uh, the breadth of our portfolio, right? So you see in the orange, you've got what we would typically call UCAS, right? Unified Communications as a Service, and this talks about the MVP, the message, you know, the video and the phone, all on one app, all on that app, whether it's on your desktop or your mobile device, you know, available to you. And on the right hand side, we didn't spend too much time on it, but there's certainly a lot of time spent on the customer experience. And again, offering that same breadth of experience with a full blown contact center, or maybe you're not a full blown contact center. Perhaps the people that you're trying to engage with are more millenniums, you know, on, on campus as an example. So having the ability to uh, communicate, collaborate effectively in a digital platform, right? All these digital, whether it's Facebook or WhatsApp or Snapchat or uh, TikTok. I mean, there's so many coming out, they keep evolving, but having the ability to communicate, collaborate across the board, whether it's in a voice channel or on, on digital channels, I think is extremely, uh, you know, extremely important. And, and of course, you have the, the traditional areas such as, you know, interactive voice response, IVRs and dialers. So I think that's the, the breadth of the portfolio, all offered uh, over the cloud in a secure and, and reliable manner. So with that, Jason, I think we've, uh, we've taken up our time and we should shift to some Q&A. Yes, indeed, folks. Hello there. Okay, great. Well, great to see some questions coming in. Thank you very much, Amir and Sangeeta, for the information there. So jumping into the Q&A, there's quite a bit to go through. Um, we'll try and get through as many as possible as we can. So... Um, sorry, Terry Bennett, so I'll fire this off to you, Sankita, first. In your journey for executing remote conferencing, it is correct that issues are really resolved by poor delivery by internet providers and not the platform. Is that correct? Many conferences I've attended break down, and I suspect that the providers of the internet services as opposed to the platform itself. So I suppose a good question as well is, um, system is only as good as the internet. I mean, is there one that's more to blame than the other in certain instances? I think there's a there's honestly a combination. Amir earlier was talking about the five nines, right? So depending on what applications you're using and making sure that those applications have a solid foundation, um, that they're being hosted uh, by their cloud provider on a solid foundation, or if they're private, um, privately owned, you know, it's it's a solid communications platform. Obviously, the internet plays a part. But the internet's not just only um, it. Sometimes a meeting will drop and you've got perfectly great coverage because your mobile phone is perfectly covered and it's because of the system you're using, you know, there's an outage. So uh, one good thing, you know, working at Ring Central is we have um, an analytics application that actually pinpoints and tells you how your applications are working. So if you are a company that really relies on having strong service, I think it's key to know that your um, analytics is uh, there available for you so you can try to pinpoint where there's maybe an outage or maybe where there's um, downtime. So you can really understand, do I need to upgrade my network? Because the last thing you wanna do is upgrade and get, let's say better internet coverage. And really the problem is fundamentally with something else. So, um, you know, making sure you find a system that can give you analytics to give you quality of service is key. Fantastic, thank you. Um, another question I'll come to you, uh, just Amir, with this one, a um, bit of a statement followed by a question. Obviously, one of the biggest challenges of a decentralized workforce is ensuring that employees are empowered with the right tools. Um, how would you strengthen enterprise security while improving remote collaboration? 
Yeah, I think that's a great question. It comes up a huge. In fact, within my organization, I've got a security practice and we actually sit down, we talk to end customers, we review their security practices against our policies. You know, we're very transparent and open about what we've got set up, you know, seven layers of security built into our, our portfolio. So I think um, absolutely security can't be compromised. And the reality is there isn't a, this single customer that we end up signing without having a detailed discussion on security with their CISOs, our CISOs, or members of my team. And again, every customer is different, but I think it's a combination, right? We've got the platforms, we've also got education, right? People need to, to be aware, even though right now I'm not in my office office, but certainly whatever confidential information that I could possibly be sharing on my screen, you know, has to be secured in a proper manner. So I believe with a combination of uh, detailed security uh, conversations and proper education, um, certainly that's, uh, that hasn't been, uh, it hasn't stopped people from effectively uh, shifting to the cloud. Security is not an impediment, that's for sure. Good. Um, and a bit of a follow-up question to you, Sangeeta, on, on before, you know, um, this one is more to do with internet connection and how you overcome the challenges with various internet connections if people are in certain, you know, Yeah, um, I actually, we have a house full of people that are using the internet, so it's a lot of drama, to be honest. Um, I multiple, I actually use the quality of service to see, is it anything going on with the applications I'm working on? And actually, no, it's not. <laughs> it's my straight internet. I live under the flight path of SFO. So I personally knew that um, before I started tearing apart and seeing what applications I'm using and putting in any sort of requests or complaints, I knew because of my analytics report, I needed to do something about my internet. So um, because of that, I was able to make the appropriate changes. Um, because of being able to pinpoint it, I saved a lot of money. <laughs> So yeah, but it's, I think it's just honestly a problem, you know, that many people face, right? There's obviously additional costs as you get higher internet. One thing that um, I've been really happy about at Ring Central is with the SEs, the team that Amir manages, those guys give you great advice on, you know, telling, telling you your scenario, what you need to do at home and saying, you know, how busy you are and how you're going to work. They're kind of helping you give, um, advice and they give it even to the internal teams like myself. Hey, you should look at this type of provider. Hey, you should look at, um, you know, this type of uh, length of support. So it's definitely something we, we are um, managing and monitoring. I hope that answers your question, the question. Yeah, definitely. I mean, even from my own perspective, you know, some people, if they have issues with video, I mean, yeah. understanding that, hey, some people might not be able to contribute in a video setting in this format. Mm -hmm. Let's take it to text, right? Which is brings into that single solution, yeah. which I think is uh, what you guys reiterate, which is fantastic. Yeah. Um, Amir, Canadian resident, obviously, there's a question here specific to Canada. So um, Canadian health organizations are required by regulations to store the data in Canada. How is Ring Central addressing this requirement? Yeah, that's a great question. So we made some great strides. In fact, we did um, announce a Canadian data re residency earlier on uh, in 2020. So there are specific aspects of our solution. We're, we're migrating more and more to, to go towards a full-blown, uh, um, what is that called? There's data residency and there's data there's another word. So we're, we're always striving to do more and more, but, uh, but yes, we do support, you know, voice recordings, things of that nature are all stored in Canada. There may be some aspects where uh, there is some reliance on some servers in the U S and that's been flagged and certainly we are getting to that. So, you know, any, any types of questions like these, uh, obviously in a forum, it's difficult to, to address the specifics. So I encourage you to follow up with myself or anybody at ring central and we'd be more than happy to, to go down the various specifics of where we are at. And if there is, a, if there is an area of data residency where perhaps you have a specific compliance need and we're not there just yet, you know, allow us to be the champion for you. That's part of my team in pre-sales is we talk to customers every day. We take their requirements into our product teams and they're extremely receptive. You know, when we, when we innovate and we develop, it's based on the needs of customers. So we heard from Canadian customers that we lack the data residency. We made tremendous strides. We made some announcements, but in, if there's any specific cases where you need more, 
we'd be more than happy to, to, to bring that uh, back and, and, and give you a follow-up with clear, concrete dates, should there be anything lacking. But as I say, we did announce a Canadian uh, data residency this year. Great. Thank you for that. Yeah, I know it's causing, you know, a lot of confusion with a lot of people. So that's fantastic. And the final question is an interesting one here, which I'm going to throw you before we close up. And again, apologies not getting for every single question here, but to Amir's uh, point, please feel free to find Amir and Sangeeta on LinkedIn and, and field any additional questions you may have to them. But really interesting here, a uh, question here from Terry Barrett. How does the platform integrate with 911 services? For example, does it allow location of a 911 call placed within a large facility? And the location of a caller, even they were when they were using your product remotely. Yeah, that's a great question. So I can take that, and I'm sure Amir can take it too. I work closely with his team about this. Our APIs, um, we do support uh, location, right? That's a requirement right now, and it's something that we want it, that we know is important. Um, with our open APIs, not only do we support a developer to be able to build um, location services into their custom workflow, but we also support technology partners to build products for Ring Central customers um, to utilize on the no code, as I spoke about earlier, the app gallery. So we support um, E911 notification companies like Genesis uh, Telemanagement Services, where you're getting alerts of um, happenings in your area. So I would encourage, you know, if you're talking about Ring Central, to visit our app gallery, apps.ringcentral.com. But I would also encourage if you're evaluating a cloud provider to make sure to work with your engineer or to work with your sales team to understand what they do to support any sort of custom E911 you want to build or um, support uh, 911 integrated services. It's something very important to us and something that we highlight at Ring Central. Anything to add there, Amir, or pretty, pretty much uh, no, wrapped up perfectly? Sangeeta, I think Sangeeta covered it. So she talked about all the integrations that we can do for specific needs, but just something as simple as, hey, when I, when I log into my uh, Ring Central MVP, my actual app, it asks me, what is my location? I, you know, I actually input that. So that's for simple things. But again, you know, in, in more complex environments, you're in a multi-site campus, or otherwise where you may be shifting to other locations, you've got those integrations that'll allow you to be more uh, specific and, and support E911. Yeah, our product holistically supports E911, and then we also extend it with the open platform. But uh, like I mentioned, you know, if you're evaluating a cloud provider and Ring Central isn't on your list, you know, you wanna make sure that you're thinking about those types of scenarios for your business and your consumer. Definitely. Thank you. I think a great question there. So fantastic way to end. And um, actually, for those questions that we weren't able to answer, don't worry, you've got the perfect opportunity to jump into a roundtable session right after this and jump into some of those questions and some of those discussion points. Um, in the meantime, first and foremost, let's uh, everyone join me in giving Sangeeta and Amir a virtual round of applause for their time and sharing. Them.